Hey everybody, Richie here from RW Hobbies. Welcome back to the dojo with my February bench update. So, not a ton of bench time. As you can see around me, a little bit of a tweak in the old man cave. So, moving I think towards you, to that wall slightly. And um, I actually got a new job I start next week. So, I'm gonna be working at home full time. Um, so, I wanna create a little bit of space, extra space in my home office. So, move my personal computer in here, which actually worked good for two reasons. Firstly, uh, filming. So before I'd, I'd have to stream through to laptop or flash drives and transfer it to my computer. Now I can. Now it's all linked straight. So it takes a step out easier. Just download the audio straight to the computer um, and the videos and stuff a lot easier. Secondly, I've got a computer here. So rather than bringing an iPad in and watching YouTube or music, listening to music while I work, I can access all my you know, emails, all my YouTube and Netflix, whatever I need to do right here. So. That was a great um, move for me. Also upgraded my chair, moved my office chair into here because I have that little plastic IKEA chair for about five years. And um, although it didn't really bother me too much, got definitely got a more comfortable chair and um, bought a new one for my home office. So that's little updates around the cave. Um, been working one kit, so I've reached down to get the box here. This guy, which I got last month, um, straight into it, Kinetics FA18D. Um, Legacy Hornet, and this is the um, Ford Air Control Marine two-seat version, obviously being the D. Um, so let me put a box down here and show you on this camera I'm up to. So, actually, so this isn't the paint yet. This is just a primer. So put down a black Mr. Surface primer, and then um, came out with white to create like a pre-shading shallow coat. Now, next up will be the light ghost gray. Um, but first of all. This is how we're like kind of looking. Use the Red Fox instrument panel set in there and some Redux figures, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, not for a beginner, this one. Um, a lot of little tweaks and changes you have to do. Structures aren't that clear because um, obviously take your other kits and you have to kind of mod modify it to make it a D. So a lot of lumps and bumps. You have to fill things out, put things in there. And it's, it's a little complex. Um, a little bit of sanding and filling here and there to get it to fit. Uh, and I got it together in a pretty good state and I'm pretty happy how it's looking right now so a couple of things with this kit firstly the fuel tanks if you look on the instructions which I'm looking around I don't have them with me right now but the, um, the instructions or the box art you can actually show the box art right so you can see the fuel tanks have the tiger markings on there like this is Bengals like tiger markings those decals aren't included in the kit so I mean, I looked high and low. The structure's a little vague, to say the least. Um, I got basically a big sheet of tiger marking decals. So I emailed Kinetic, and fair play, they responded back within 24 hours. And I said, hey, I'm just trying to find out what decals do I use for the fuel tanks. And I came back, and um, basically their response was, you know, we, we used the four sheet of decal paper. Um, we didn't have any space left, so we didn't include them. So I was like, okay. So what I did was I just went with the generic Bengals. Um, writing on the side i've done the fuel tanks already painted and weathered them up um and um but i responded to the guy and i said um oh okay fair enough um and then he responded back i think maybe he's the owner of kinetic which i know lucky model kind of linked right same company um he responded back said hey have you tried her f16 like trying like a sales kind of thing and i said well actually i haven't because i just picked up the tamiya one and um yeah, but I have a YouTube channel, so if, if you want to send me one, I'm happy to review it or do a build video for you. So it's like, sure, what's your address? So <laughs> first time ever, I got a little bit of a collaboration going. So they're going to send me the F-16. Um, this is a couple of weeks ago now, so it should be here pretty soon. The brand new tool, um, really highly regard regarded, supposed to be really nice, because um, the old F-16 was a bit of a pig to put together, um, let's be honest here. So the new, new F-16 is coming, so my plan is to um, probably build that when I get it. As I'm getting, you know, as sending, as, as Connie sending it to me from China, I'll probably do, you know, be good, be good about it and build it pretty quickly. Um, so that means my F14 30 second scale will get pushed back slightly in the build build um, schedule, I guess. Um, but going back to this one, so yeah, so the decals, okay, I went off a tangent there, but yeah, no decals for the type for the tanks. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna paint a match up tiger markings on 48 scale. Um, so that's why I went with the Bengals, um, just simple on the fuel tanks. Other than that, it's pretty good. Like I said, it's, it's the fit issues, little niggles here and there, but it's nothing, just a little bit of filling and sanding and um, taking your time. One thing I did notice, which is gonna kick me in the ass, um, I did check the instructions. 
then it didn't tell you to drill any holes out for the pylons. So nothing in the instructions about that. I don't remember seeing anything on the inside. So it's gonna be one of those cases where we do have pins on the pylons. So perhaps just cut the pins off and just you know, roughly build super glue, slap it on and uh, hopefully get the right position. It's gonna be a little tricky on this one because obviously with um, Hornets are not straight, the pylons are slightly angled, so that's going to be a little bit of an issue too. I'm looking here, there's no real markings on here, the plastic either. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, overall, decent kit. Definitely not for a beginner, like I said, it's a little bit tweaking and fettling here and there. Um, but it's going to turn out real good once you get those tiger markings on. So, my usual thing, I painted it shallow coat, and then just gave it a quick little buff with my um, sanding sponge here. Just get a real smooth surface between paint coats. So when I put the paint down, you know, it'll be a nice service to lay on to, because I really want a nice smooth service because we got hundreds of decals of tiger markings to go on here. So I want a nice, I don't want any silvering, I want a nice kind of surface. So I just mean going away, sanding it, creating a nice smooth um, surface on here. So that's what I've been working on. Um, not pretty too much left work on it really, because like I say, all the little stuff like the, um, the fuel tanks and um, all the ordnance and stuff we've done, um, painted up got decals on to build the gear gear doors and that's pretty much it now reed oak so i've got reed oak pilots and that's my next topic of the day so <laughs> these aren't cheap so this is one we've got a mini round here i got two pilots um 48 scale i got one for the front one for the back now if i put on the camera here hopefully you can see or maybe you can't see if i trying to get sorry just trying to get it here there is a definite size difference there you know, but look at the helmet between the two. If it, sorry if you can see that. Um, there's a, this guy is a good 20%, good if not more, smaller than this one. Now, it's noticeable. Like if I was doing a single seat in different aircraft, you wouldn't really know. But the fact I'm putting these together, it's definitely noticeable. And so I emailed Red, Red Oak. And I was like, hey, in the picture, just let you know that this one of these guys looks smaller than the other. I'm not sure one's too big or one's too small. Um, and the response back, initially was like oh there's no problem here's some photographs that other people use them kind of a little dismissive but then hey let, let me look into it we've got a new production run so he gets back to me and says a couple of days later and says um yeah we have checked it and you're right this guy is definitely smaller so i don't know the number but basically one with the um the guy kind of like this like figure falling around or attaching or, or um, messing with his mask in 48 scale um the modern like the hornet kind of guy um is too small so Lessons learned, I know I knew to check because behind me, the F-14D 72nd scale, I used some Reed Oak ground crew figures. And sure, some of those look like, like over seven foot tall. So with Reed Oak, just tread carefully and make sure you measure these guys because they're not always accurate to size. And again, if I look at these sideways on too, you know, this guy's like this wide and this guy's like this wide um, scale comparison. So yeah, big noticeable difference. So Reed Oak, at least guy's fixing it. He's sending me another one free of charge or replacement. So we'll get that one and we'll see. Um, maybe I'll put a little photograph on the Facebook page and you can see um, the difference between the old one and the new one. It should definitely um, be a lot bigger, which is not necessarily a good thing because it's going to be hard to fit into the seat now. So the bigger, I've got to definitely chop the feet off and stuff and try to squeeze them in here because otherwise they're not going to fit very good. Um, but that is really on the, the Super Hornet. Now, this is a build series uh, on Patreon. So my F-35 is on right now. And then this will be right after it, next couple of weeks or so. I think we've got two more weeks of um, F-35 and then we go to, go to the Hornet. So good segue. Um, I've had quite a few new channel members on YouTube. So thank you. Appreciate your support. And it lets me upgrade some of the stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute here. And make videos better quality, that kind of stuff. Um, Patreon is my preferred use, way to use it, just because it's so easy. It's use, good user interface, you can see all the videos, you can scroll through, get early, early access. It's same should be the same price as YouTube. The problem with YouTube is, it's hard to share like private videos. So I can't, like with Patreon, you can just scroll through and see the page and click on what you want. With YouTube members, what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm every time I, every week or every couple of weeks I have a new video, I put, um, a post for members only put a link in there so it's like put a link in for a post that's how you're getting it so it's a little bit convoluted i appreciate any of your support but if you are going to support without being cheeky but patreon is definitely an easy way for it i think both both user friendly for the for you as a, as a user and for me as the um the content creator so got those two on a go um like i said if you want to support me and help the channel awesome um appreciate it thank you ever so much some people have been over, over a year been supporting me and that's amazing so Again, early access videos, you've got the F-35 on there, you've got the Persian CAD on there, you're gonna have this on there. Um, so you're about, 
almost six months ahead of the um, the curve of YouTube. They'll eventually get to YouTube. Some videos don't go to YouTube. There's some there's some exclusive content on there. Um, I think there's even some videos when I renovated my house last summer. Um, stuff like that, more behind the scenes kind of stuff. But if you want to check it out, feel free to do so. Um, that's my little plug. Um, moving on then to what I've purchased. So let me kind of move this to the side and kind of go through some stuff here. So first of all, which pains me because this costs twenty eight dollars. Two bottles of Flory Models Dark Dirt Wash. Now. This stuff is the bee's knees. I've used this for the eight years I've been back in a hobby. Um, it works flawlessly. Clay wash, it panel lines, just you know, gloss coat, splash it on with a brush, wipe it off 20 minutes later, and it'll leave perfect panel lines and weathering, perfect color. These weren't these were like five dollars back in the day. Now you can't get them from the UK, you have to get them from high altitude hobbies in Colorado. Um, and shipping alone is like I have a I think it's like 10 40 or maybe 14 dollars or something really high shipping now it's not a guy's fault i guess he's shipping usps priority mail and he's probably just paying the cost but colorado to virginia um yeah so 20 dollars for two of these um now it was a bit of a tough one to swallow but at the same time it's uh, you know, one of these bottles lasts me like a year and i built quite a lot some big models too so about a year out of a bottle for me personally so you know we've got enough couple years supply plus my existing one is about four fifths four as well so i was just a little nervous because they stopped doing sanders you know last year and i don't know if we can stop doing washes or not so just in case i just hedged and got a couple of bottles just to keep in the stash when i thought about it 28 dollars for a couple of bottles of wash was expensive but hey that's way cheaper than buying a kit and like i said this is each one's like a year's worth of use for me so washes next up red fox so Red Fox, just kind of Quintus Studios kind of deal. They do the 3D instrument panel stuff, um, as you can see here. So used, as I mentioned, obviously move, used the, the D um, in here, the two, which was like 12 euros. Got the single seat, because I have the um, C in my stash for Kinetic, and that was 10 euros, excuse me. Um, for that price, I think it's really good. Quinter Studios are looking at 20, 25 for a 48 scale. The 30 second scale one was 30, just about 30 euros. Um, again, that's about 50 euros with Quinter Studios. Now, these are a lot more expensive buying them here in the US or buying them in Europe. Buy them from the direct. So go to Red Fox Studios website and you know I had to pay 10, maybe 14 euros in shipping from Hungary to the US. But even with the shipping, buying a couple of sets is way cheaper buying direct. So bought them, got them within a couple of weeks, no problem at all. And um, were a little bit, not quite as good as Quintus Studios. They're really good quality, don't get me wrong, but they're just a little bit more brittle. And I found um, just moving around is a little bit harder to maneuver, just a smidge a little bit harder. Um, Quintus was, I think it's definitely better, um, but these nevertheless look really good. Just brittle, different as well. With Quintus, you dip them in water and release them from the paper, and then you PVA glue them on. Um, with these, you're not dipping in water. They're kind of like a harder piece of paper. I just use a pair of tweezers and just you just pull them off. Um, they just they're just very lightly attached. So you pull them off and then just PVA glue them on. So a little bit different with that one. Now, reminder: I've done a video about this before. But if you are using these 3D cockpit instrument things, whether you're using Quinter, Red Fox, or whatever one you're using, use PVA glue. They're not they're not adhesive. They come they're like they're not decals. They um they're attached to paper like that. You might dip them in water, but make sure you use you know like a Gator glue or something like a you know like a PVA glue to stick them down. Otherwise, they're just going to come right off. Um, or super glue. You can use super glue, but the problem with super glue is once you've got them there, that's it. Whereas PVA glue, you know, you got a good 20 minutes to maneuver it, move it around, um, and you have to worry about it. You know, getting a wrong position, that kind of stuff. Um, so Red Fox. Next up, our friends, we just talked about Red Oak. So a couple of figures, obviously got the 48th ones we just talked about. I threw the boxes away already, and I've got two 32nd scale ones. So again, F14D, these are late 90s. I've got a Rio, and I've got a Pilot, and um, that's the poses. And they, they do look good. These ones do look to scale. They look pretty good. So I was going to use the Ares resin cockpit set for the 14D, which I talked about last month. Um, I'm getting rid of that. So if you want one, I'll sell it to you for a good price. And um, instead, I'm going with Redo figures and that instrument panel I just showed you. I just For me, I think I'm, that panel is going to look a lot better than me painting an Ares setup. Um, and these are the pilots. And you see 30 second scale, definitely worth it. Bigger size, more 
I don't say more detail, but definitely the detail will show more. Um, and these very beautiful, you know, looking figures. And that detail in, in, this, in the tub is going to look pretty awesome. Now, I was scrolling around Facebook, and you can get as a company. I can't remember the name, but you can get um, Maverick and Goose thirty-second scale resin figures for your F14. Um, so if you're a Top Gun fan, you, I'm sure if you look online, you can find. I can't remember the name, but they. I don't see the price, but you can definitely get um, 3D printed um, Top Gun pilots there. I think maybe they might have had Iceman, but they definitely had um, Maverick and Goose. I'm pretty sure. All right. Um, next up couple of things um talking about moving the studio around a little bit as you see i've gone back to a green mat um black one i've got a little manky i've had over a year and just i'm not sure why i went to black but green just shows stuff up way better this like like light to greeny gray kind of color um just way better shows things up better um so i've gone back to that also moved move stuff around you see the camera is now sideways on so it's square so we're not on the angle like we have been in the last few videos but one thing i've always kind of struggled with as you've probably seen over the years is sound. I've gone through so many microphones. I've gone through um, snowballs. I've gone through Yetis. I've gone through na nano Yetis. I've gone through a couple of lav mics. I've gone through all kinds of microphones. Um, the Yeti Nano, sorry, the full Yeti, Blue Yeti was the one I was using recently. The problem with a lot of these mics, you have them right in your mouth to talk. And if it's more than like an inch or two away, you can't really hear. It's really quiet. Um, so you have that right in your mouth. So if I'm doing this kind of face to camera kind of shots, I don't want a big microphone in my mouth. And um, you know, the Yeti's big. Um, so did some searching and I've got a new microphone. So this guy right here, which is a little bit inconspicuous and less in your face, um, no pun intended. And this is Auto Technica. AT2020 USB. Now, I know it's a modeling channel, but I know a lot of people on this channel have YouTube channels or aspiring YouTubers, and this is just a little bit of advice. Um, this thing is really good. Um, hopefully, you see from this sound, it's not next to my mouth. It were good, you know, 20 inches away. You can put it on desk over here and you can still hear it. And it's, if you go on Amazon, it's like 3,000 reviews, 4.8 stars. Now, they do two types. They do the more professional one where you got the you know, proper cable plug into like a, a mixer and like a sound thing or you can get this one it's a usb which just plugs into the computer for, so for youtube and stuff i'm not an opera singer i think we're good with this one and i'm really happy how it's turning out so even in this build series um with this guy you'll see that i'm going through a couple of different microphones that sounds a little bit up and down but bear with me um once you get through to like part number three um and then moving on for all my other new videos We'll get way better sound so it's been a bug of mine i just trying my best and just i think now you know thanks to all your support and stuff upgraded it and to this microphone now this wasn't a crazy crazy expensive this was i think i paid like 69 or 79 dollars on amazon um obviously brand new and really nice comes with a stand um i just did need to buy an adapter i'm looking around here to get it onto a boom mic it was a bit of a different um size but that was like a six dollar um adjustment from amazon like a little um connector but yeah really good um, again all the technica ad 2020 usb if you do any kind of streaming and you're looking for good sound and mic um, again recommend this it's not right in your mouth which is great um, if you're doing voiceovers it's fine but when you face the camera i don't want a microphone right in my face so this one really happy with this quality and um, all around um, and this is by far the best mic i've had uh, at least 10 if not 20 in the last three or four years so fingers crossed this one's going to last and and see me through um a few more years and um, as, as always I want to keep building quality up and making the videos better and thank you to your support I'm able to do so so there's that one um, next up clips now these this is very boring probably but this is one of the best things I've bought in the last two years so these like binder clips went on Amazon and I bought a pack of 24 assorted sizes so you got mediums a little bit smaller and you got tiny guys. These, all these 24 clips were like, I think I paid 11 something. Now they're like 12.50. Um, if you want to buy these, the link is on my Facebook group, um, which links below. I put like a week ago, I put a link to these um, to buy them. Really, really impressed. Before I used clothes pegs and they pinged off, they went all over the place. These work really good. I mean, different sizes mean you can clamp the wings, you can clamp you know little areas, smaller ones, you can do bigger areas of the wings while the glue dries it's just, and also because they're curved like somebody mentioned to me um like fuel tanks you can just put them around a fuel tank and it'll clamp it together really 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 i can't stress as much how how like life changing these are for me compared to the other clips um really really good clips um 
I've been using them on this one to put it together. This was a bit of a... It, it was a tough to get this together. I'm not going to lie. It was some feddling involved, some filling, some sanding, some pressure and points. And these things work really good. And then being flat as well, not curved. Um, highly recommend it. So if you need clips, um, probably the best tool purchase in about two years. And that's a big statement to make. But for $12, I mean, it's really helped my modeling a lot. So big big shout out for these um binder clips i'm sure they do different types but again this one four different sizes and i really like the size makes a big big difference with this you know because sometimes you need a smaller one you need a larger one it's you got the whole selection right here so that was big for me so sorry for the crinkling noise but the clamps um right there so no kits um i do have a Nothing really on order. I do have obviously have that F16 on its way to me from Kinetic. Thank you, Kinetic, if you're watching. Um, I do plan to buy that when it, next month when Hobby Bosch released that Scammel um, British tank transporter from like the 90s. I want I want to buy that one because I'm going to put a Challenger tank on the back. Um, looking at the dates, it'll probably be a Challenger one. So I just want to do like a little vignette, kind of shelf dial vignette kind of deal with that one. So super excited. Um, that's not going to be a cheap model, but that's going to be out um, very soon, um, around the time, you know, next couple of weeks or so. That's really it, I think, on my my radar. Really, that one, um, and whatever new stuff comes out catches my eye, I guess, as well. Um, I've got plenty of my stash to work on. Like I say, F14D, some point this spring or summer, I'm itching to get going on that one. It's a big box, a big aircraft, and I have no idea where I'm gonna put it, but I'm definitely excited, because as you know, F14s are one of my favorites. Right, enough talking. Let's now switch over to Facebook and take a look at some of your work. All right, here's Facebook group. As always, it's totally free. It's Facebook. Um, if you wish to join, the link is below. And it's Adobe Hobbies Model Makers Club. So if you want to post any questions up there or any pictures of your work, it's a friendly place. Um, I throw up some of my updates. And um, let's see, I put a link in here of that Amazon clips from earlier. Um, so five subjects as always. The first one caught my eye is this beautiful F35 from T Tamiya Kit by um, When You. It's the... Um, it's basically taking, taking um, the satellite anti-satellite camouflage of the SU-57. Um, not only does this look pretty amazing, um, I hope if I move this in camera shot, there you go. Not only does it look pretty amazing, but um, just the, the colors look great, the weathering looks good, and again, all those people say, I'm not building F-35 because they're boring. Look at this guy, it's beautiful. Um, beautiful build, um, go for the pictures here. Just a great, kit. it's a, just a really great kit. I really, really enjoyed this one. That's why I went out and bought a second kit because um, yeah, on the other side, obviously the weapons bay, it's just a shame how you display these. You don't really see too much of this when it's on the shelf. So you know, if you do in flight, maybe this is the one to do, right? So you can see the um, on the other side or maybe like a mirror or something, but absolutely stunning model, um, great kit. I actually love this kit. So go out and buy one and he did an amazing job here. All right, next up is David and um, Sky Raider. Again, beast of an aircraft. This is a authentic A-10, right? Um, really nicely done. But, and I guess it's probably a Tamiya kit. And the famous kind of wasp markings on the back here. Very, very cool subject. Nice, clean paintwork and um, well built. So this really caught my eye. Next up uh, is Caleb and he did a H111 in the Motorhead one. Um, this is a special boxing and this is really hard to find now, this kit. Um, so this is basically created a base. Let me go through this a little bit. Look at the base he created. Basically, he just took something off the internet. I spoke to him about it. Um, and just really cool kind of rock and roll slash aircraft crossover here. But I really like the base. It really sets it off. The in-flight um, HE-111, semi-second scale. And look at this. This is a really cool kit. I really liked it. I wouldn't mind doing one of these myself, actually. So great inspiration here. Um, and again, just looked really awesome. All right, next up is Luke, and he built the 35th scale Tamiya Tiger One. Now, not only does this look great in the winter camo, but I'm showcasing this because these kits for the money are fantastic. I think you pick them up for like $25 still. They've been around forever, decades, maybe older than I am, but um, great kits. And just if, you, if you're new to armor, you want a little mojo build, the Tamiya 35th scale kits, very cool. 
So this one, he basically um, did the snow camo, which is, um, I, this is, I, I did the exact same one myself. I sold this a few years ago, but I did this and I believe I, this is the first time I've used hairspray. So I was using Andy Hobby's headquarters back in the day, uh, four or five years ago when he started, when he was doing more building models than reviews and um, previews. And um, he built this and, and I copied his, his um, basic tutorial and it turned out really good, a little bit of rust and stuff. And as Luke's done here, it's, you know, that simple base just really looks very cold, looks heavy, really cool piece of armor. Um, now I'm just gonna make sure it is 30 fixed. I know he has building some 48 recently. Um, I lost it, but I'm pretty sure it's 35th. All right, then last up is Mohammed with his Growler E18G 18th scale um, VAQ138. I'm mostly building Hornet right now, and um, you know I love them. So and this really caught my. I know he's he he's a big fan of these as well, and he's built a few of them. Um, oh, there we go. Um, looking at this, he didn't put what kit it is. I'm guessing. Look at the slightly deeper panel lines. This is probably the main kit, not the Hobby Boss. I think Hobby Boss is a little bit more refined in the. Um, panel lines but the main builds up to a beautiful kit I've built the um which one I built I bought the E right when it first came out um great weathering paintwork looking awesome and interesting markings too They've, there's some really good markings in both the main and the hobby boss kits really kind of spoiled so obviously the um this is the um super hornet the the um the growler with the jamming pods very cool the black tails Nice, nice, nice. It's a really good job on that one. Um, so that is it. A quick down and dirty. The five from the five I picked out. There's tons of great work on there, so it's really hard to pick. But I try to pick different people every month and um, kind of spread the love a little bit. But there you go. Again, want to join? The links are below. So now back to me. So there we go. Thank you, everybody. As always, appreciate the support. Appreciate you posting on there. Links are all below for everything and. Um, yeah, I'm going to crack on, get the first coat down on this now. The light goes gray. And then, um, yeah, carry on modeling. So have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.